Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to get this thing. I'm like, I forgot I even had this backdrop here. I'm like floating in San Francisco. Uh, how you doing? Good. Thanks for uh, willing to do this. Oh, of course. Of course. My pleasure. So I can just kind of jump around then before getting to um, the Bergalia topic. What if, uh, what everything started with doing um, Lord of the Flies? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Lord of the Flies was really cool for me because I was still, you know, so young in my, in my journey. And um, uh, yeah, I was, I moved around a lot, right. Growing up. So um, it was neat because um, I was just, you know, in the drama program there, I just moved to this new school and he didn't, you know, thousands of kids and but I've always liked acting and, uh, and they had a good drama program, at least like a better one than, than I'd been used to in my small town. So, um, the teacher actually recommended, they had asked if there was any, you know, students there that, um, that would want to, you know, maybe take part, you know, audition for this. And he recommended me. And, and so it was neat because though I was still in school, I got to, you know, do like a, a professional play. I actually got paid for it. And, you know, being with people who had their, you know, university degrees in theater or whatever. And, uh, and it was a great experience. It's, it, you know, I remember the director being great. And uh, I remember asking so many questions, though, like I was, I was just couldn't stop asking questions. And I think uh, at the, the very end, the rap party, someone said that the stage manager, they're like, yeah, I think we had a bet on how many questions you asked one day. I think it was like over 35 or something. I'm like, oh, great. But uh, I think it paid off. Uh, I like, you know, where I just was soaking it up then. Mm -hmm. And so what was the um, first paid on on camera gig that you got? Uh, um, you know, my first. So I kind of went to film school and, uh, you know, got an agent, been on the auditioning and doing, you know, indies by that point. And then, uh, um, my first, you know, icebreaker, as we call it, um, would be uh, Caprica. It was uh, the prequel to Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I got to kind of play this cool character in the, in the virtual world named Ash Hawk. And, and he he um, yeah, he was he was like almost like a 40s, like zoot suit and all. And yeah, it was neat. It was neat. And I know that uh, Confined would have been around that same time. And confined, yeah, probably would have been around that same time. Yeah, um, yeah, that was neat because I got to do my first horror movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, die. After a while, you're like, how many different ways can I die? You know, I got you know get poisoned or get stabbed or you know that way. I think I was pushed off uh, into my demise <laughs> and down a flight of stairs. <laughs> and since you've been a part of um, a lot of darker projects, you kind of have a preference for darker acting opposed to comedic or oh no you know that's kind of neat you say that because i mean to be honest that's the first uh i i do a lot of i like to pursue them both equally but i feel like i do a lot of comedy so any chance i get to play something darker is is really neat it, you know i i i really like to jump on that um on that because it gives it gives me a chance to play something different because I think in general I'm actually pretty happy go lucky so <laughs> I, I like to I like the to to show that side. And what was your uh, personal experience um with Supernatural since you got to be on that twice? Yeah, Supernatural. Wow, <laughs> Supernatural. Uh, to be on it, yeah, twice. And, and I didn't think you know speaking of ways you know I could die because I. You know, it was a starship um, Jefferson, I think they call it, and uh, and 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 then they'd be able to come back in the, in one of the finales as well. It's pretty neat. So, um, but those those guys, um, you know, Jared and, and and Jensen, they're 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 so nice. You know, you could tell why that show just kept going because not only was it a good show, but like the crew, you know, the cast members, everybody. I think really liked what they were doing, wanted to be part of it and like had fun. You could see they were still having fun doing it all the way till, um, you know, 15 seasons, I think they did. So mm -hmm. yeah, cool to be a part of it. And then, so what, what was the timeline of when you started getting into voiceover? Yeah. So voiceover um, happened, you know, naturally I always liked animation uh, growing up. And so, uh, I, you know, I've studied it, 
but it, you know, it took kind of a gradual thing. Like most acting, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of get your repertoire going and, and build it. So I think, I think I had, you know, maybe done some radio spots and maybe done, um, you know, a pilot that didn't go. And then finally, I think my, you know, my icebreaker on that would have been uh, My Little Pony getting the okay. uh, tender taps. And, and so that kind of, once I got that, then it was like, okay, I started getting more and then, you know, getting series. And then it's interesting because I had already been doing voiceover for a little bit before I got to do um certain you know dubs or anime stuff and uh and that kind of actually came a little after prelay i think one of the most rememberable ones off the top um were were the beyblade i know you're gonna you're gonna get there but yeah like that that was definitely because they're done with ocean studios right and and it was interesting because I remember going there and they were like, oh, you know, when you're new, you should always be bringing your headshot. And, and, and I'm like, I was thinking, oh, come on, am I new? You know, in my head, of course, I'm like, yes, 100 percent. I'll bring it next time. And, the, and, uh, and, and that was Randy. And then and she's she's awesome. The casting director there. Um, so once once I got to to, to work with her um, and 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 Bill before, you know, she's she's now we, at first, you know, it's kind of intimidating and now we have like a good rep. We can just almost like be friends. Uh, but um, she really, you know, was my champion and they keep bringing me in for for specifically for anime overdub that they do. So, yeah, yeah. that was awesome. And everybody I've talked to kind of has a different answer for how they got used to dubbing. So how was that for you? Yeah, you know, it, it, I think it's something you just got to do. I, I had, you know had a little experience because you do a little bit of ADR, you know, even when you're doing on camera stuff, right. Sure. You might, you might, uh, you might uh, be watching the videos and trying to match that. Um, I think it came, comes fairly natural, but it's different because what's different about that is you're not just doing your own, you're, you're matching the person uh, possibly who's done a performance or you're not matching it and they've done it a certain way and lifted a certain way uh, that you have to make it work. Um, so I think that is the challenge to bring those performances to life that might already only have a, a smaller window that you can, that you can, you know, make that work with. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I grew up on, you know, I don't know for, for me again, talking about like like Beyblade like I I grew up on like Dragon Ball Z like I, I love that right so for me when it was like that letter rip you know to get to do that kind of stuff uh you know I I, I always wanted to do that kind of power up move uh in an anime and similar you know uh, we'll get there um you know with the with the Nintendo stuff but um yeah yeah and how could you uh, personally relate to Louis at all yeah, Louis. Well, again, to, to get to play, um, you know, that batter side um, to bring, he, you know, he had a lot of depth, too, though, because even though he might at first be a character that, uh, you know, Beyblade does that where, he, you know, he kind of learns and he grows. Um, but, you know, he's a powerful character. He's iconic. And the Beyblade series, like they have such good fans um, and, and support, I think. And the storylines are, are awesome. The director's awesome. So, um, I found that just just exciting, really. Mm -hmm. And has there been a case yet with voiceover where you've had to get really dark, or has it mostly been on camera so far? Yeah, no. I mean, well, I don't know. You know, for lack of better words, dark. But when you, when when we say depth, like recently, I got to play a character. The show is not, you know, dark. I wouldn't say as as some as especially because anime can go pretty dark. Um, but but as far as depth um, and relating to the character, I got to play this character, Swag. In the, it's a South Korean anime uh, called Tobot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, like, he, he perishes in the end. So sorry to the spoiler alert. Um, but, uh, but, like, I, I felt we were able to do something in that character um, that I could bring something to him from me, uh, uh, knowing about loss and, and sacrifice and, and, and things that I... I have, you don't always get to do. As far as building characters, like even I did the Littlest Pet Shop for a long time and that wasn't dark, but you know, you, you build these characters, you get to do so many episodes. Um, and in that show, we had a lot of freedom to bring, to improv and do whatever and make it your own. Uh, uh, and so when you have to, when the show's, you know, suddenly ripped out from you, 
like you're just like what it's it's gone like we're you know we had another series confirmed and it and it just suddenly new presidents change or whatever it is yeah. at, at Hasbro and 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 you're like oh you have to say goodbye to these characters that can be kind of you know something in itself too with something like Lilith Pet Shop again for example you have you know, eight people in the room, you're all doing it or 10, 15 at that time, 20 sometimes cast, you know, all bouncing off each other. So that energy is something that's really awesome. And, and the rumors are true. I mean, you really can't go, uh, you know, you'd see people in their pajamas, whatever, like in voiceover. It's just, it's one of those places where you, I feel like you can be yourself and uh, truly. Mm -hmm. Or, well, I mean, you're being the character, but if for an actor, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a dream place to be in. And do you still actively pursue both or do you have more of a preference for voiceover now? You know, I still actively, I do, I do prefer both. I think though voiceover might have a slight edge lately uh, where I like, I might like it even a little bit more than on camera. Uh, I think so. Um, but that being said, yeah. Uh, I'm always liking to go out. Uh, um, I did a really cool project, some of our stallions recently um, with my judge. Um, and that's really cool movie with like dealing with mental health and these, these, it, it's just, it's, it's really hilarious kind of, you know, satire. Um, so it's dark and kind of comedic at the same time. Um, you know, I, I, I still enjoy all the performances, all the roles I get to do. Mm. And then I know, um, of course you got to be, Ali and several of the Sinbad movies. Yeah, that's not neat because that you know those movies have like they have history. And uh, again, getting to do them at Ocean, the director Carl, he is he's really knows his anime. Um, and that character was super fun. Like he's the buddy, you know, that kind of quirky buddy uh, in it. And and um, yeah, all three I think films, in my opinion, whether I was in them or not, I think I think they're good. They're good animes. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the case just generally with voiceover so far where you've had to alter your voice the most? You know, it's interesting because, you know, getting to the Drag Alia Lost Vice is a character I don't often get to, you know, play something, you know, even that dark, yeah. um, you know, and again, he's he's got something. Um, so, so you know, I would have to say that's one of the characters uh, and, and Louie, you know, off the top of my head when, when it comes to voiceover. Mm -hmm. And how did you become involved with uh, Drag Alia then? There's a great casting director, Adrian Lindsay. Um, and so, you know, um, she's been one of my first supporters. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because you started this interview saying theater. And um, when I first moved to the city, I guess her, uh, she had ca came to see some plays. One of the last plays I'd, I've done um, for the university there in British Columbia. It's, it was like a professional kind of, it was called Brave New Playwrights. They had uh, 15 plays. And I was, you know, very early in just moving to, to, to the city. I had, uh, and she had seen me there at that, oh. at that play. And it was some years later um, that she was like, oh, does he do voice? He does voiceover somehow anyway. And, and so, then we, you know, we had been building stuff together. Um, and so when it, it was rare that Nintendo um, was getting people like, I'm, I'm, how would I say this? They, they usually use uh, uh, maybe unknown talent. I'm not sure the word exactly, but like they were using, they wanted to, you know, do a full search for this one, a proper search. It was really awesome. Cause I, I am a huge Nintendo fan. I have everything from the nintendo to super nintendo to you know the switch uh i i and so um and then you know app games like this are are really cool and specifically though i like rpgs mm -hmm. and so um so yeah again when this came along with the opportunity and then not to get to voice um you know not one but maybe even more than one character yeah again it's it's really awesome and then to see it you know succeed and and fans and people like the game um and that's that's all you can ask for <laughs> yeah it's the best it's a good feeling mm -hmm. did you audition specifically for one of the characters first or was one of them just given to you afterward uh no i think i think usually 
with these, there's there's quite a few characters possibly at the beginning you can go for, you can look for, right? Um, but in the end, when it goes down to it and, and there's, you know, callbacks or the people pick which one and 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 I think it ends up being one that is a little a like little bit like you in the end. Um, so yeah, I, I think in the end when I'm like, yeah, that the hope character, it makes sense. I think I think it well, they both do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do you think you have more affinity with uh hope or vice then <laughs> yeah it depends on the day maybe um i think i think in general i probably i'm more like the hope character i like to give inspiration you know i like to give you know not just in his name but you know in the in the character he is um kind of like a, a hero ish but they, i mean they both can be, but but uh but then again the other side is like is like that. I, you know, I also do music sometimes. Right. So, so it's like, you know, sometimes I, I, you know, I have that other character too, where it's like, that's my darker side, you know, and then I get to play with that other side. So. And this is obvious, I'm sure, but with a, with a property like that, are, are you uh, like getting physical in the booth with like fight efforts and things like that? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that, that's a good question. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Doing the effort sounds, um, you know, even in my uh, uh, auditions, whenever I get them, uh, bringing that pre life to it, you know, um, is, is a big part of it. And I think that's, that it's fun. The exertions I did a video, another, um, little game recently, um, called flash party and uh like by the end i was just sweating like you know just like physically actually in this booth like from during an hour and a half you know full workout of these um so yeah it's fun and i'm sure it had to be really cool as well to be part of a, a mega man yeah with the nintendo link and then you know big fan of mega man and then iceman um you know i was close to the Mega Man as well, uh, but uh, Iceman again. It's like it, it seems to go the way that in the end, that's the one that that's best for you. And, and Iceman uh, again to play one of the villains. I think I think it was awesome, and he and he's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of going off, but um, I guess early on in your career, or if maybe you still think about it. Were you ever um, considering moving to LA? hundred percent still am, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Good, good one though. Good research. Like I'm still, everything I've done pretty much, um, has been based in, in Vancouver, BC. And it's, uh, it's a little hard. It, like Americans come here often and will film, um, all the time. And, uh, but to go that way for us, it's a lot harder. Um, but I am still in that process. I have a manager in LA and, uh, I would like that just mainly for the opportunity to, you know, develop more with casting directors, get more auditions. And, you know, there's, there's certain series um, and movies that will only be done there. So um, that I'd love to be a part. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I do hope uh, to one day still get to go there um, and uh, yeah, get a, get, get a little more chance at Hollywood. I do mm -hmm. love it there. And this is a, another just general question, but with, uh, with other like ocean group, voiceover people are who are you like closest with uh adrian for two uh off the top of my head i know he's a good guy and and you know when i was starting out he even helped you know coach me a little um and 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 stuff uh so you know it's it, i think um kirby morrow yeah. he passed away recently but uh you know a, a lot of people you just can't help it and i like keeping people's memory alive i don't i don't you know, I'm not bringing it up to to be in a sad way, but to remember these these, these just great talent. And but not just that, but off, you know, uh, when you're, you know, you might see that person after an audition, and and he's like, "How are you doing? Like, you know, how are you really doing?" And 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 checking in with people. And um, again, when I was starting out my career, being like, "Hey, buddy." let's go run some lines. Like just come over here, you know? And, and, uh, and you know, and, and it's amazing. It's amazing. And then that, that builds the whole community. Right. Yeah. I mean, back when I interviewed, um, Kiara Zani and Michael Adam Thwaite, they both had, um, like stories about Kirby. Do you have any, or were you not super close with them? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I will say, no, the story, <laughs> I'm not going to get into any detailed story right now, but yeah. honestly, that's, that's the one that's, that sticks out to me because like he, he right away when I first met him, like he was just like, Hey, 
like you want to do this like come over to my place like when we went I went to his place and he would just he would just help me and and this was just out of the good, goodness of his heart you know um and that that always sticks out to me mm -hmm. you know? I, I'm not sure if the credit was right but um I did say that you've gotten to be a stand-in for some major things as well yeah interesting you say that I've never been asked about that um okay. but uh you know, yeah, on the odd, on the odd um, occasion, I will, because uh, as, you know, a Vancouver uh, based actor, I think it's always good. Uh, you know, the actor who works the most works the most and kind of and meaning that in, in, in a long term career, you know, I've got to do this over a decade. And um, so um, some of the chances have arose where I've got to work, um, namely one of the, the, the best experiences was um, on a series of fortunate events because yeah. Um, it was really like a master's class to me. I was rehearsing because um, the kids can only work eight hours a day. So then in that case, they want to stand in someone over 18, right? Not only will they have standings anyway, but um, but it's, it's it definitely helps with the lighting crew um, when I can work, you know, 12, 16 hour days or whatever it is. Yeah, we would get called in in the morning and, you know, I would be doing the rehearsals often and the blocking with um, the director who... Geez, um, he's done everything from, you know, Men in Black to like Get Shorty and, and, and right. beyond. Yeah, NPH obviously was very, quite method in his, in his acting pretty, you know, he's playing, he was playing a dark character, right? Um, Lemony Snicket. So, uh, but still to get, you know, eye to eye with him on a lot of things and, and do some of the, the scenes with him. Um, my favorite though was probably Joan Cusack. Yeah. She was, uh, she was just a doll. She just, I can't. You know, she would say little things like, let's say there's a camera and, you, you know, you, you duck out of frame kind of because you're trying to get by or something. They're lining up a shot, whatever. Right. And I remember her. She's like, if you're going to cross frame, cross boldly, you know, and I'm like, oh, like, you know, just in her own way. However, she, you know, she does it. And and uh, I'll never forget that. You know, if I cross now, I just cross, you know, <laughs> I just own it. Um but more than that, she was just like, oh, if you're ever in Chicago, like I own this little tea shop and, you know, with knickknacks and, and uh, you know, come by and, you know, oh, you want to ride in the in the star car? I don't mind, you know, like things that you don't have to do. But, you know, she's she uh, she just kept it real. Um, and then she's just a phenomenal actor. And I'm, I'm a fan of her work, obviously. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but there was a lot of cool. A lot of cool experiences like that. Um, one that, you know, I'll also say, because I'm talking about things I don't normally do, and you'll get one more gem, but recently I got to do a read-through, and I'm not in the movie, but um, with, uh, for um, Christmas Chronicles, you know, yeah. um, the series, right? Uh, and for me, like, I'm just a huge fan of Kurt Russell, like, and his work for a long time, and Goldie Hawn, my parents grew up on it, right? So I actually, like, flew back, you know, cut my, I was on, I was at TIFF in Toronto, I think, just to, like, just to go back and just do this read through so I could read through and Christopher Columbus, like these directors, just for that opportunity, you yeah. know, to, to read with them, um, you know, because at the end of the day, I just love entertaining. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Has there been a case where you've been um, like really daunted or starstruck by someone you've worked with? It, it probably would have been that that case. It's okay. funny you say that. I mean, but no, but really, because he just comes right up and he's like, hi, I'm Kurt, you know, and you're just like, hey, you know, you got to <laughs> play it. Like, I know, you know, you got to play it off, right? Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, people are pretty awesome. People are pretty human, you know, I think. And this was uh, going way back, but I couldn't really find info. It sounded like they were dark um, projects, but uh, like short films, like Scars. Yeah, I would say, well, Scars was neat because one of the first ones I produced myself as well. So when I was starting out um, and I got to play kind of a, you know, hitman character, um, you know, named Max. Um, but as far as the independent projects, if I had to say one worth checking out, that was one of my favorites uh, is Easter Bunny Bloodbath. Yeah. Uh, it's just a funny uh overall kind of, you know, horror that I, I still I still has a special place in my heart. I'm sure that I know that you've like talked about the story of um getting involved with the Marley and Me sequel, but for anyone that doesn't know, yeah, I mean, well, Marley and Me, that was Michael Damien, the director. So thankful for him, he put me that in that and uh, in Princess for Christmas, which I actually that is the one movie I got to go to Europe to film, so that was really awesome. 
and um, super awesome experience in Transylvania and castle shooting uh, arrows with Sam Hugan from Outlander. Like, you know, I wasn't in there at that time. And Katie McGrath, she's in a lot of like, super uh, girl right now. Um, but, um, you know, Michael Damien anyway, directed uh, Marley and me too. And, uh, and that's one of the, you know, main leads. I did get to go to LA and go to the Grove and go to the red carpet for that. And, um, and so, yeah, that was still to this day. And, and even though it's not Fox 20th century, you know, uh, but just to see, you know, to be at the Grove, seeing the movie premiere and then, you know, it was like, dun, 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 you know, like that, that was like, all right. Like, even if that was all I'd ever done up until that point ever, like I would have been happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is there anything else that's upcoming that you can safely talk about or? Not safely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because there's something I do want to say, but it'll have to be a part two. It'll have to be a part two. <laughs> I... <laughs> well, my final question then is always asking, what do you, um, what do you want your legacy to be? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think about that and, and, I think in the end, I just would like at least some of this, any of the art to, you know, to keep, to keep going. You know, I'd like, to, I'd like to know that there was some type of quality in, I think in my work, I think some type of substance. And I mean that, and I, I you know, I just hope it inspired someone in some way, you know, maybe they wanted to act or it just got them through a day you know, at the end of the day, I, you just want people to, you just want, when you create your art, hope, hope that somebody receives it, hope that somebody watches it. Um, so for me, yeah, I would just like, you know, a long, a long career. I don't think, I don't think like at some point, you know, let's say I shouldn't use the name, you know, let's say someone like Bieber or someone like that, right. You know, someone who, you know, maybe they have, you know, millions and millions of what, whatever followers or something like that. Right. A lot of people, what I'm relating to is a lot of people put a lot of onus on, I feel like on followers nowadays on social media, on things like that. I use social media as a tool. I like it, you know, I'll post, but it's not my end all, you know, and I feel like the world has gone a lot on, you know, a lot of this is about influencer, uh, you know, and, and maybe what the definition of a celebrity or famous or whatever that is. And, and so for to me, it's really my own journey, you know, um, getting to work with, you know, Universal Studios or 20th Century Fox or Warner Pitt, you know, these things that I grew up on that I think for me, hopefully um, that there is that, you know, something to something to be said, even with my music, that's, uh, you know, some type of where it's not just just for the fame. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the good thing about that, if, if that makes sense. And, and it was, if I don't, I don't know why I'm equating legacy and fame together, but the good thing, if you do have more of that, it, it is a good tool, right? If you have more of those flaws, you have more of that influence, then your shot possibly of getting the opportunities you want um, could be better. Right. So, but, um, but my legacy in the end, uh, yeah, I just hope people liked it. <laughs> I hope they like what I do. Has there been, uh, if you can pick like a single story that you've gotten from fans about how anything you've done has uh, helped them in some way? Or? You know, I've had a few and, um, you know, I'm not going to name anyone specifically, but, you know, often if someone comes to me and they've, you know, been bullied or, you know, maybe they've been hurt in some way. Um, you know, I know I can relate to that. Um, and so I, I feel, I feel like those stories and, and hopefully, you know, for me, uh, I've been able to also give back and sometimes speak at schools and, 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 uh, share my experience. So, so I think, I think that's, that's one thing that I think if anything, uh, I, I, I know has probably made some difference in people's lives or just being lonely possibly, yeah. you know, um, which is a real thing, you know? So I think, I think hopefully, uh, yeah, those, those experience and, you know, people can reach out to me and they know I'm usually, if I don't respond right away, I'll, I'll still try to when I can. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. I'm glad that we uh, got to do this. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, good interview, Chris, uh, and all the best. Shout out to uh, all the Dragalia Lost community as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay. Adios. Yeah.